This is the first video clip for the course DBA 6103 Global Management and Future Organization. This course will be divided into two main parts. The first part will discuss about the concept, principle, and theories in management. And the second part, we will discuss on how to set up an organization. But in this course, we give more emphasis on modern future organization. So we will try to look ahead for the better one, the better one, for an organization in the future. Okay. Now for the first clip, there might be divided into two, three, or four clips, because I would not want to make each clip too long. It is really difficult to upload up to Google or to other video center. Okay. So in this first clip, I will concentrate on the concept of management. There are two words that are very confused in uh, among educators or academicians and students and even general people, the public. The first one is administration and the second one is management. Now, think in yourself, by yourself, what is different between administration and management? Now, you may pause your video for you to think and then turn it on again. Okay. Administration and management are actually at different level. Administration mostly means the controlling or governing by a body, which in universe system call university trustee or university council or university board, which is the big, the big uh, committee to overlook uh, the operation of an organization. So when we talk about administration, what would uh, the University Council or the Board of Trustees do? What do they do? First, they create the ideology of the organization. You see? Ideology means the full picture, the ultimate condition, the most perfect situation that the university, the college, or company, or entrepreneurship need to achieve. So the word ideology is really important for both individual, like myself, yourself, need to have ideology. Now, any of you, do you have any ideology of your own? Okay, write it down. We can share that later on, okay. What is your ideology? I have my own, my own ideology also, okay. Now, the second part about ideology is to, the first part is what it is, okay? 
what is your or my ideology. Now the second part about ideology is what does it comprise? Ideology comprises four things. First, philosophy. Your philosophy, my philosophy, if it's an organization we call corporate philosophy. Now, what is philosophy? Philosophy is the concept, guidelines, based on our belief, core values, and moral recognition by an organization or an individual. So the statement of philosophy must reflect what you want to achieve. The statement of philosophy must bring forth the perfection according to ideology. For example, uh, some allies, okay? The, 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 perf the perfection, the ideology of that ally is to provide the service, the best service to their customers. As if their customers were their lovers, their father, their parents, brother, sister, or relatives. Okay, that's the perfection. So if we, if they, that ally, treat their customers with love, with tenderness, and the wish to make customers happy. I'm sure that will fulfill their ideology. Okay, so that ally should set up some philosophy, some corporate philosophy of their own. For example, uh, we adhere the statement of philosophy, maybe we adhere the belief in providing the best service to our customers as if they were our beloved relatives, parents, sisters, uncles, aunties, nieces, nephews, and so forth. Okay. So the, the statement of philosophy need not be very short. It need to be perfect statements. Okay. So, number two, element number two of the ideology, second to philosophy is mission. M-I-S-S-I-O-N. Mission. Mission means the ultimate task, the ultimate goal you need to achieve. Usually, according to Professor Peter Drucker, they should, they should comprise four characteristics. Okay, the statement of mission. First, it must reflect philosophy. For example, that ally with uh, the statement of philosophy that they would like to provide the most gentle services to the customers as if they are their beloved, beloved relatives. So the mission of this ally may be such as love you as 
big as the sky. Okay. Love you as large as the sky. Or you may, uh, they may say, uh, smooth as silk, because they provide very gentle service. They compare the, 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 gen, the gentle service as silk because silk is very smooth when you touch it. So the mission of that ally would be smooth as silk. This is the first one, characteristic. The statement of mission must reflect the statement of philosophy. Second, the statement of mission must be simple enough for the general public to understand without having to turn on the dictionary or any explanation. Now, when you look at that allies uh, statement of mission, love you as much as the sky or smooth as silk. And then you ask your grandmother, hey, grandma, what do you understand? Smooth as silk? Uh, love you as much as the sky. And if your grandma answers the question correctly, that means that statement of mission is right, is correct, is suitable. Okay. It's number two, okay? Number three, the characteristic of the statement of mission must be precise, short, not too long. Uh, Professor Drucker uh, suggests that it should not be more than 25 words in English, okay? But in Thai or in Chinese, may be different. Okay, number three. Number four, I think it's really important also. Easy to remember. The statement of mission must be easy to remember. Meaning, when, when they have a look at it, once they get it right away. Smooth as silk. Very easy. How many words? Smooth as silk. Three words. Rak kun thau fa. Right? Love you as much as this, as big, as much as the sky. Of four words, okay. And it must be able to put on in front of your uh, polo shirt uh, at the back, you see. So you can use it as the banner. So the statement of mission can be used as the banner. So I'll leave you again. Uh, the second component of ideology is mission. Missions must be first, first reflect the philosophy, second simple enough for everyone to understand, third not too long, should not be more than 20 or 25 words. Last one is uh, easy to remember, okay. Now the third component of the ideology is vision. Now what do you, what do you understand the, the term vision? Think about it. Okay, you can pause, you may pause this video and write it down. What is vision? One or two minutes, okay. And then you turn it on again later. Okay. The term, the word of vision, video, or something like it means I see. Video means it's a Latin word, it means I see. So vision, it means what 
ICE. Actually, vision is defined as the image of success. The guiding image of success. When your your uh, employees, your staff read it, meaning they see the image, the picture of success, they feel motivated to work very hard, to drive, to run, to raise the organization up to the ideology, up to the, the top of the mountain. See, in Thailand, we have, uh, we have a, a resort up. Look, it really must look like a bear. It's what we call Pu Gading, Bear Mountain. But it takes you about four kilometers to climb up to the top of that Pu Gading, uh, Bear Mountain. Okay. That's the ideology. When you went up there, you see many, many beautiful things. The weather is really cool. And you can see, you see many, many beautiful things. The weather is really cool. And you can see the pine trees, similar to what you see in northern part of China. Okay, but in Thailand, you don't see that kind of pine trees. Okay. But you see that on the, the Pool Kedung or the Bear Mountain. So when you want to pursue it, your friends to go to Pool Kedung, to go up to Bear Mountain, you need to show them photographs of beautiful things up there, you see. Not only one photograph, but three, two, or four. So the images of success or the statement of vision must be more than one statement. But you can see in Thailand, or I know in China, when we say, they say vision in Thai, visai yathat, visai yathat, but most Thai people say visai yathat, which doesn't mean anything. Visai yathat, visai, this term means the range, uh, the distance you can see. Thad, Tasana, it means vision or pictures you can see in the certain range in the future. Thai people usually say, we say that, we say that, but actually the right pronunciation should be, we say that, is Pali language. And Pali language belongs to Thailand, not from India. Sanskrit belongs to India. But now most uh, academicians by them, Pali and Sanskrit came from India. That's not correct. Pali belonged to the land of Siam, Cambodia, Laos, Burma. But Sanskrit, it belonged to Indian people. And it taken place long, many thousand years after Pali. Okay. So, vision must contain more than one item, must reflect the mission and reflect the statement of philosophy. Now, the fourth component of ideology is commitment in Thai called Pantakit. Panta means to buy you. Kit means affairs. Or the work or the job you were forced, you were um, made, you were committed to perform in order to achieve the visions, to achieve the missions, and to achieve the philosophy. When you can achieve philosophy, Mission, vision, and commitment. Your organization will ultimately become perfect, become full, full achievement. Okay. 
So this is the first one of the duty of administrator, administrators. So administration will not, will not use their hand to do things, but use their mind and their brain to foresee the future, to establish philosophy, comprising, uh, to establish ideology, comprising philosophy, mission, visions, and commitments. Okay. Now, the second thing they have to do, first they set up uh, ideology, second they have to set up goals. Goals will be the, the, the future path of what they want to bring the, the organization to succeed. See? And of the goals, the third one, policies. They have to set up the policies. Now, what does the word, the word policies mean? It came from the term police. It means power. Police, policies. It means the statement that the employees need to follow, need to accomplish. They cannot avoid it. If they, they set up some policy and you cannot achieve it, you are at fault. You may be dismissed, you see. See, policies, it means the compulsory task that the organization need to accomplish. It must comprise statements to display or to show the employees what they have to perform in order to fulfill the commitment, in order to get success, uh, successful outcomes. Okay. Now, we talk about administrations. First, ideology, comprising philosophy, mission, vision, commitment. Second, goals of organization. Third, policies. Now, the fourth one is how to achieve the policy, how you can manage to make policies realized, or how you can realize the policy. This term is called measure, measure, measure. Policy followed by measure. Policy is what to do, and measure is how to do, see? So the fourth one is measures. In Thai it's called matrakan. Okay. Now after you have policies and measures, the fifth one, which is very important, you need to make plan. You need to make plan so that you will be able to uh, achieve policies, goals, and ideology. See, so when you want to make plan, there are at least three levels of planning in here. First is long-term plan, five years. 10 years. Before this, they make it 20 years or 15 years. But nowadays, I think if you make any long plan, it's up to your vision, your sight, whether you can look long enough in the future. Because nowadays, technology changes very fast, very rapidly. Right? If you don't know that in the future there will be something something that you didn't expect 
for example, some 30 or 40 years ago, we would never expect to have anything such as internet in this world. We would not expect to have telephone calling, mobile phone or cellular phone or uh, tablets, whatever. We never expect that. And we did never expect that the memory card, SD card you put into your mobile phone may be capable of putting 128 terabytes of information. You see, you never expect that. So meaning that in the future, education will be on your palm. That's what I told you. OPE model. OPE, on palm education. So you look in here. The future will be offline, not online. 60, 60 or 70% of information will come from offline. Whereas online is for you to send your assignment to to Georgia, to chat with your friends or to discuss with your friends. Offline will be the the permanent storage of information. So we call offline center, not online center. Google's by two or whatsoever in your country, right? Uh, online center. And then you set up in the evening, at night you were sleeping, the machine is downloading the information, the videotapes or so forth down here. So without internet, you can still browse in your palm to get information. So things change. So if you make the long plan too long, you will miss this thing. Because mostly people would have the so-called mindset, their own mindset. For example, education in the world now try to compete to a Western style of education. Whereas now, myself, Thai educator, try to convince uh, my colleagues in Thailand Stop following the West. Why do you have to create the curriculum in the same way as the American people do or the English or European people do? You know that Thailand is 8,000 years history. Thailand, or Siam, Siam meaning the sacred, the the sacred land, the holy land. It has eight thousand years history, and similar to China. China is also seven thousand five hundred or eight thousand years the same. But how about the West? The most one thousand years. Why do we? Why do we? condemn ourselves that we have nothing good. Why don't we think that some good ideas they are enjoying in the West now might have come from the East? I read a book on the year 1314, uh, Da Vinci, get some idea from China. There's a book as thick as this. See. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you make plan, you have to understand that you have to, your mind must be really clear, really clear from mindset. I call it old normal. You have to have the new normal way of doing your plan, planning, long range plan, and then term. I'm sorry, uh, long term, short term and then operation plan, which is usually year plan or annual plan. Okay, let me tell you the difference again between the administration and management. Administration, uh, the person form up 
in the name of the board of the company or the board of trustees, universal council, to lay down the ideology, ideology comprising philosophy, mission, vision, and mission. And then ideology, goals of the corporation or organization, then policies, then measures to accomplish the policies, then making plan, planning. Okay. This is the 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 role of administrators. And then who take all of this to do? There will be a group of people who shall be appointed by these administrators to manage the organization. So this group is called manager to do the management, okay? So what we are talking now, this course talking about global management and future organization. But I give you the idea that administrators should be the one who oversee the planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and call, controlling all of the business of the organization. And then the person who were appointed to make it happen would be called chief executive officers or managing directors or managers. Okay. So managers are those who make things happen. Okay. Directors, managers are those who make it success, uh, make it happen by making use of other people's. Okay, this is my first clip. It's already half an hour. I will stop here. And then the second clip will give concentration on the term management. Thank you for uh, viewing or listening. See you soon.